Okay, this is um, Inkscape lesson two. In the previous lesson we looked at some of the basic tools um, and now we're going to um, carry on with that. So in this lesson we're going to look at looking at the, all of the individual tools and then we're going to look more in more detail at the pen tool which is the most powerful tool and the trickiest tool to master in Inkscape and then we're going to look at gradient fills. So let's get on with it. So here we are, back in Inkscape again. And last time we looked at the uh, rectangle, and this time I just want to just take you through a little bit more of the rectangle here. Now on this rectangle I've created a rectangle, and it's got a rounded corner. And you'll notice as we go through these tools that there are options on them. Um, if we want to increase the size of this, this square, we can just click and on the arrow tool as we've seen before and with um, we can move it around the screen but if we come back to this tool here um, we've clicked on the rectangle tool again you can see that there are squares in the corners and then in one of the corners there's a circle and these circles you can use you can move those to actually change the shape of your square so here we've got a, a square with nice right angles and on this now we can slide these tools around um, this slider and make our rectangle more of a rectangle with rounded corners which is a very useful tool. So let's go on down to have a look at this one next to here is the, the, the circle or ellipse tool. If you wish to make a perfect circle you hold down the shift key and draw your circle and then you can move it as we've done before and then click on the circle tool and again you can see here is a another circle here and that enables to either make segments if we go south like this we can see a segment oh, that's quite that's gone wrong here and if we go north you can see we've got a pie chart so bring this back down make it whole again if you want to make it whole there's an option at the top here called make whole and then we can I don't quite know why that sector's not working at the moment, but um, there you go. There you go. There's a sector or a option going on here. Make hole. Excellent. Right, we'll get rid of that. Now we come down to the next section, which is the stars and polygons. And at the top here, you've got an option along the top here that tells you how many sides or how many corners you want to make a polygon. We want to make a star in this first instance, so you just simply create a star, and move it around to here. We can change a number of sides, but if we click on the star option again, we've got in here some editable features. So we can increase the length of each arm. We can, in fact, set things off center. We can make it bigger. So this, there's lots of options in here. So if you wanted to make a star like that, you're away. So um, if we delete that, and then we get back to the star option again, we'll make a polygon, we'll make a pentagon this time, there it is. And you can just, just with this option, you can just increase the size of it. Come down to the spiral, and the spiral is another um, neat tool and we can just unwind our spiral to make it as big as we wish or as complex as we wish so that's a nice neat little tool as well and again we can carry on our spiral just keep adding at either end and then we come down to the freeform pen tool which is just exactly as it says you can just play with that you can apply strokes to it you can just draw very useful if you have a um, pen tablet and then we come down to oh, I'll jump this one we can have down here the calligraphic lines a bit like the freeform pen tool but this time you can uh, um, let's make our stroke style zero so we don't so you can see what's going on here and I think I'll make the pen black and we'll do it again so you get these nice calligraphic pen techniques that you can 
work with. And then we have text, which is fairly straightforward. You can just start typing. You choose this type of your uh, of, of your um, your font. Choose down here. We'll use Batang, um, and you can just keep typing. Font size is terribly tiny, so we'll make it bigger. And each of these things you can edit once you've created them. And then finally let's go back to the pen tool. Now the pen tool is a really great object that allows you to create um, any kind of object that you wish to. It's great for tracing. And we've made this shape. Now each of these shapes here um, each of these points can be edited. We've gone, we've, we've created our shape here, and now with this tool here, we can edit the path nodes, um, which are these nodes here, these handles here, and we can actually click on a path, and by clicking on a path, you can actually shape it. And each one of these handles here actually acts like a pin, and enables you to create a curved vector curved graph which is what gives vector graphics it their smoothness over things like bitmaps and these are then scalable and this is a tool that's very very hard to master so let's just spend some time looking at this tool what you can do with this tool is you can click and drag and as you've dragged now you've, you can already create a curve between one node and the next and I click and drag again and we've now got an S-shaped curve. It takes a lot of time to get used to using this tool and in the first instance if you're trying to make um, complex shapes I would recommend that you do a straight line shape and join them together and then use this tool here to then edit the shapes the way you want them to be. It makes life a lot easier to to create a complex shape. And then once you've um, got your shape organized the way you want it to go, you can actually come back to here and you can move your shape around to create the exact shape that you want. There's a huge amount of um, scalability in here. However, this this you can see this line here comes to a point. If you want to actually make that a smooth curve, you can click on here and it makes it back into a smooth curve. If you want to make that into a point, you click back on the point curve and again you can then edit each of those elements again. If you make it smooth, when you use it both move in unison. Can you see? However, if you make it a point curve, that means each pin acts independently. Very useful tool takes lots of time to master it. It's worth the patience and perseverance. Um, and then finally we're going to look at the gradient fill tool. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a simple box. There we are. There's our simple box and we're going to create a gradient fill. This tool down here enables us to create the gradient fill. Click on this and the toolbar comes up and these two options are is a linear gradient or a radial gradient. We're going to create a linear gradient and we're just going to click from one end of our shape to the other. Now this goes from, this fades from black to transparent and, and most times that might be enough for you but now we can edit this and getting the gradient tool right in um, Inkscape is, can be a bit of a challenge so let's, let's edit this so what we're going to do is we want to go from white to black, say. So let's let's now let's create. Let's go to blue, so you can see. Add that stop, and now we've got our gradient, but we want to remove the offset, and we want to remove the transparency. So you want to go from black to blue. Click like that. And so now we've got a solid color gradient. Click OK. And now you can see how our object has changed. We're going from black to blue. And we get a much smoother gradient that is more akin to what we want. 
and you can move this gradient anywhere you like and gradients are a really good way of creating false sense of um, three dimensions so this looks like it's got a gentle um, curve in it lights approaching from the left um, and here it's approaching from the top left hand corner and you can use gradient fills to great effect